If you suffer eosinophilic esophagitis, you may have noticed that at times your symptoms seem to worsen. Why is that? We're going to discuss the reasons that eosinophilic esophagitis is triggered, and at the end of this video, I'll highlight an important immune mechanism that has not a trigger for eosinophilic esophagitis and why that is so important. Eosinophilic esophagitis is an autoimmune condition of the esophagus in which eosinophils attack the esophageal lining. Eosinophilia can occur in other parts of the GI tract, but its symptoms are most dramatic in the esophagus because at its worst, it can cause a food impaction. We discuss what eosinophilic esophagitis is in a separate video that's linked below. Food is the main driver of eosinophilic esophagitis, and we know that actually removing culprit foods from your diet can relieve eosinophilic esophagitis, and that's the basis for what's called an elimination diet, which we discuss in more detail in a separate video. The major foods, though, are dairy, eggs, as well as soy and wheat, also nuts and seafood, and we'll discuss in that separate video how to prioritize that and make it work best for you. Another interesting trigger of eosinophilic esophagitis is airborne pollen. People have noted that their symptoms can be worse when their seasonal allergies are worse. There's even been a case report of a person who, once their seasonal allergies were controlled, all their eosinophils disappeared. Now, whether that's because these airborne pollens are actually coming directly into the esophagus, or it's through postnasal drip, or it's more of a systemic reaction that's also manifesting in the esophagus, not entirely known. But it does beg the question, if you have eosinophilic esophagitis, should you go out and get a skin test and perhaps even get immunotherapy to direct against those pollen allergies? And that's not right now a main recommendation. However, if you do have symptomatic seasonal allergies and you suffer eosinophilic esophagitis, I would certainly encourage that you talk with an allergist for how immunotherapy might actually help you with all of these symptoms. Another major driver of eosinophilic esophagitis is gastroesophageal reflux disease. We have a separate video on that link below. It's thought that the acid contents coming up into the esophagus weakens the barrier and makes the esophagus more susceptible to some of the food antigens. Another thought is that that just engenders general inflammation in the esophagus, and as the eosinophils come into the esophagus, they discover other foods and antigens that they take interest with to trigger the eosinophilic esophagitis. Either way, one of the main first treatments for eosinophilic esophagitis is to start a medicine that reduces acid reflux, and that seems to actually help many patients. A food impaction is one of the most dramatic presentations of eosinophilic esophagitis, and that's commonly triggered by meat. Now, that's so, so much because meat is itself an immune trigger of eosinophilic esophagitis that there's some evidence that it can be. More commonly, that's simply just because it can be gristly and tough and stringy, and it gets caught up in the esophagus. And that's when we have to perform an endoscopy to actually enter into the esophagus and remove that stuck food. Lastly, what is not a trigger of eosinophilic esophagitis? Importantly, immunoglobulin E, IgE. IgE is what directs an anaphylactic reaction where your throat closes up and you can't breathe. That's what we typically think of with the feared peanut allergies. The most eosinophilic esophagitis related food allergies are not triggered through an IgE mechanism. That's very important to know because that means that these are not going to be the types of food allergies that cause those most feared complications of anaphylaxis. We'll discuss in separate videos though that as you approach an elimination diet where it can be important to get testing for IgE to make sure that you don't unintentionally unmask an anaphylactic reaction. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please subscribe and look for other content on eosinophilic esophagitis. Please remember this information is not intended to be diagnostic. If you have questions and concerns, please take them to your healthcare provider. I'm Mark Cooper and I appreciate your time. Be safe.